TradingView is a chatting platform. When we talk about technical analysis and all of that, all of this has to be done with trading view. Okay? Technical analysis has to be done with trading view. And the chatting platform here is simply analyzing market based on past um, um, you know, events, what are past activities of what has happened in the market. Okay. So that is why we need trading view. So you just get a trading view. Though if you need more features of trading view, if you need to get access to more data and the rest, then you need to um, subscribe, but with the free trading view account, you can actually get started as a beginner trading any asset you want, whether it is crypto or forex. So we need a trading view account and trading view can be used on the web, which is what I'm going to use today. And equally it can be used on the app. That's an app where you can actually use it. The app, you know, gives you, um, you know, you cannot do more of more with the app, but majorly the app is meant to maybe after setting up your trading view account, you can now use the app to just be checking wherever you are and follow up. Okay. But the major thing is that you need to understand how to use TradingView both on the web and then on the app version. So I have videos that walk you step by step on how to do all of that. I will quickly leave the links to those videos so that you go and see them and learn more. Okay. So when we come to TradingView, the first thing you want to do is to select the asset you want to trade. Okay. Now, if I click on this icon here, where you see the ETH USDT, which is currently what I'm selected. So the chart you are seeing here, the candlesticks you are seeing here is for the Ethereum USDT. Okay. So if I click on this, this dialog box pops up. All right. Here is where you search the symbols of any market you want to trade, whether it is stock, features, forest, crypto indices, all of this. Okay. Anything at all you want to trade, you'll see all of them here. So the first thing you want to do is to come in here. Now our focus is on crypto. Okay. That is why I have the crypto tab selected here. If I'm not on crypto, I can select or then whatever asset that I want to trade, I can just go ahead and type. If it is the Euro USD you want to analyze, you just type in. Okay. You just go ahead and type in Euro USD and you'll see the pair pops up. Okay. But since I'm on crypto, I'll just go ahead and type BTC USDT. Okay. So once I type BTC USDT, you see all of this pops up. Now, when this pop up, you will see the data according to the exchanges. Okay. All of these exchanges, at times you see the data, the, maybe the variation is always in price. The price could be different. And most especially, even on Binance, the price that a particular crypto asset is trading on the spot market is always different from what it is trading in the futures market or the perpetual contract market. Okay, so when you are selecting any asset here, you want to make sure that you are selecting asset based on the exchange you are going to be trading with. So if I type in BTC USDT here, okay, once I type in BTC USDT, you see all of these pairs BTC USDT, BTC USDT. Then in the middle here, you see um, if it is, you know, standard features or whatever, if it is perpetual contract, you'll see it attached to it. Then here, you'll see the exchanges. These are the exchanges. So the first one here is for Binance, KuCoin, all of these exchanges you see here. Okay. So for any exchange at all you are going to trade with, uh, but in most cases, the data are always accurate, but I'm always confident when you choose the particular exchange that you want to trade. Okay. So that you don't get mixed up because I've had experience where I selected a particular altcoin. Okay. I was seeing a different data here. I use that to trade features on Binance, but the price to my greatest surprise, I was using the spot market price to trade on Binance until I got liquidated. So it was then I noticed that the altcoin was trading at a different price entirely on the spot market and then trading a different price entirely on the futures market. Okay, so you want to pay attention to all of that as well. So um, futures contract, as you can see here for OKS, they, they equally added it here that it's a futures contract. So... Uh, most of the exchanges do that. Okay, yes, you see here perpetual contract and all of that. Then here, this corner here by the right, if I click on this first option, this is your watch list. Once I hover over it, you see it say watch list. Then the next one says alerts. Okay, so this is where you set alert. If you are not here to be monitoring the trade, you can set alert so that whenever a condition is met, whatever conditions you want to set up are met, then the trading view gives you a lot in your email, in your app, or in the um, in a web version like this, as the case may be. Okay, 
Then for the watch list, this is where you add all of the coins you want to be trading, you want to be analyzing. So you see my watch list is filled up with both altcoins and you know Bitcoin and Ethereum. So any of these I want, instead of coming back here to start searching for that coin, you can just go ahead. Let's say I don't want to trade BTC, I want to trade SRP. I just go ahead and click on SRP, then I can analyze the chart of SRP here. Okay, if I want to trade Litecoin, I just go to Litecoin. Then I can analyze the chart of Litecoin here before taking a trade. Okay, so we go to BTC, which is our main boss. This is what we do, all right? Now, when you select a coin you want to trade, the next thing you want to do is to look at the coin in different time frames. I've told us here that um, to trade, okay, the reason why some of these candlesticks you see here are red, okay, what determines or makes a candlestick red or green is that for the red, the market opens, okay, from up and then closes below. Then for the green, the market opens down here and closes on top. Then if you look at the candlesticks, you equally see these tiny lines up and down. These lines are called wicks, okay? Wicks, it means that this is the body of the candle where you see, okay, this thick body here is the body of the candle. So because it is red, it opens up here and then closes down here. Now the week is the highest point and the lowest point the price went to. Okay, it means that the price opened here. It went up to as high as the for this candle. Or let me use this one. The market opened here. It went up to as high as this level here for the week. And then came down again to as low as this level, but later closes in the middle here. Okay, now once you know this, you will now know that each candlestick here, whether big or small, for now, I am on the one hour time frame. Okay, each candlestick there represent one hour. It means that it took this candlestick one hour from when it opened to when it closes. It took it one full hour. All right. So if I change to the one day, okay, whatever candlesticks you see here, it means that it took this candlestick one day from when it opened to when it closes. All right. So for the past few days, these candlesticks have been, you know, bullish, has been opening down, closing up, opening down, closing up, and stuff like that, okay? Then if you want to go to the five minutes, whatever it is. So before you can actually take a trade, you need to analyze the market starting from a higher time frame, okay, to a lower time frame. So now to be able to know the direction of the market you want to trade, you need to make the trend your friend, okay? I've said this, you know, on, almost in all of the strategies I shared on my YouTube channel, I always tell people, always make the trend your friend, okay? The trend cannot be going west and you are going south. It, it doesn't make sense, okay? So you need to follow the trend. There is a pattern all traders follow in this market. And that will bring me to this screenshot here, okay? So in the market, all right, whenever it comes to trading, So when it comes to trading, there are a few things traders are looking for, okay? There are just majorly two type of trend. We have uptrend and then we have downtrend, okay? We have uptrend and then we have downtrend. Now this diagram here just explains everything. For uptrend, okay, when you to know that you are in an uptrend, an uptrend means that the market is always going up, okay? No matter how you do trace to it, it will always go up, it will always go up, it will always go up. That is uptrend. Then for downtrend, is the market is going down so for an uptrend we are always looking for higher highs okay higher highs and then higher low okay now higher highs mean that the market started from a low point here it went up this way which means that this high here is higher than the lowest point where it started from okay and then retrace back when it retraced back it didn't go to the first lowest point all right, but it has to make a higher low so meaning that this low here is higher than the previous one okay so when there are higher highs and higher low we are in an uptrend okay you see higher highs higher highs higher low higher low okay then when we have a high and then the market retraces back and then make a low okay once it retraces back it didn't go back to the previous high so it means that this high that it has created here is lower than the previous high okay so we we'll always experience a lower low okay and then a lower high so when there is a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, it means that we are in a downtrend. Okay, so first, before you take the, make a decision of whether you want to trade, you need to first determine the trend, the current trend of the market. Is it an uptrend or is it a downtrend? 
If it is a downtrend, you are always looking for sell signals. Then if it is an uptrend, you are always looking for buy signals. And this structure you see here cut across to all um, the time frames you see here. Okay, whether it is a one minute time frame, we have all of this structure of, you know, higher highs, okay, and higher lows, and then um, the uh, higher, lower highs and lower lows and all of that, okay, whether it is on the one minute time frame, the three minutes time frame, the four hours time frame, you will always see all of those structures, okay, and if you are just scalping the market, then you can trade within the one minute, five minutes and 15 minutes time frame. Okay, but for swing traders, it means that your trade can take up to a day, all right, before it closes. It can take more than a day before it closes, all right. That is for swing trading. But for scalping, you are just making profit within the short movement in the market, okay. So if I want to scalp the market, maybe I just buy when the market is low here. When it goes up here, I want to sell. When it comes down here, I wait again, buy here, okay. When it goes up here, I want to sell, just like that, okay. This is the higher, the time frame I, I was sharing with you um on you know this chart here okay so we have higher highs and then higher low which is what you are saying here okay so we have higher highs okay this high here is higher than this one all right and then this low here okay i didn't even point out this one there's a low here so this low here is lower than this one or is higher than this one it means that we are in an uptrend okay in this short period here okay and then we have a period where the market will always consolidate and then either shoot up or shoot down and stuff like that this is what we are looking for so for you to be able to look for these higher highs you look at it on a higher time frame okay so if i come to the one hour time frame all right so you see that at a point now if you look at this market on a higher time frame the overall the overall trend here in the higher time frame on the daily time frame here the market is in a downtrend the market is in a downtrend if i click on this icon here you see where it says trend line okay trend line is what you can use to determine the structure of the market the trend of the market so if i draw it and bring it you see that this line okay is from up to to bottom all right this is from up to bottom meaning that we are in a downtrend okay if i've drawn another line maybe from this area here up here it means that we are in an uptrend okay so here it is from bottom to top so we are in an uptrend in this direction okay so within this trend whether up or down trend you always have a period where the market will have to consolidate all right but since we just want to take profit just make short um, trades or thereabout if i come back to the one hour time frame okay i don't look at the overall picture because if i want to look at the overall picture from this area down here you see that the market is slanted so it means that we are in a downtrend okay and then if i look at this period once i bring my measurement to and look at this period from where i've marked here okay if i, I check from where i have marked down here you see that um is is actually for this bar you're seeing here all right this is over a month all right this is over a month it means that for this market to trade between this level to this level it has taken it over one month because as you can see it's 30 days all right so you don't want to analyze that you want to analyze the period where you are Okay, except you want to do swing trading, okay? Because why the market consolidated here, this period is what, what I want to pay, to pay attention to, okay? This market dropped from 18,000, all right, down here. And then at 16,000, the market started consolidating in this area, okay? So this consolidation period here was broken, all right? You see here, let me bring my horizontal. So this consolidation period here was broken around this area, this structure was broken around this area i don't know why this is so fast okay around this area here all right and this long move here this one candlestick okay this big candlestick was the one that actually broke this structure of consolidation okay which means that for from here okay if we bring our trend line here it means that from this area here up here the market has actually been moving up okay so it moved up this way it consolidated a bit it moved up again okay consolidated here came down a bit and then moved up again so this candle is beginning to form what okay higher highs okay and then lower highs okay which is what you see here so it do it does higher highs and then higher low okay higher for uptrend it is higher highs and higher lows okay then for downtrend it is lower highs and then lower low okay 
So here we have higher highs and then higher lows. So this low here is higher than this one. And then the low that is co where it's currently consolidating is equally lower than the previous one. Okay, so these are the things you want to look for first before you know the um, uh, you know the position you are going to take. So if I come back to the 15 minutes time frame, what to equally look at that structure? Okay, so here you equally see the same structure that this market. Okay, after consolidating a bit, it broke the structure. Okay, you see the higher lows and then higher highs and stuff like that. So starting from where it started here. Okay, so though the overall view of this market is that the market is still you know. Downtrend. So, but there's a period where we want this market, the structure where we want this market to grow. Let's say you are trading on the daily with the daily time frame. If I come to the daily time frame here and zoom out, okay. Once I zoom out, you are looking for this market to actually break the structure. So I'll bring this here, okay, and then maybe put another angle here, somewhere around here, okay. So this market is just consolidating around this area. So if the market broke, it breaks this, okay, it means that the next point that we are going to be targeting could be, okay, either the market will come to around 18 and then consolidate a bit, or it will shoot up to 20 or 21,000 going forward. Okay, but for scalpers, you know, you want to just take a portion of the market and use it. You want to look at the one hour, okay? Looking at the one hour, you see that from this period where I marked, okay, I've removed the rectangular, the, the line here, so you will not be able to see that. But from this period here, this angle here, this area, okay, from this area up here, the market is in a bit, okay, a, a, in an uptrend, all right? If you look at it from this period, this point of view where we are looking at it, it, has, it is in an uptrend because you see that the market moves up this way, Consolidated a bit here, okay, and then pops up again this way. Consolidated a bit, pops up again. Consolidated a bit, okay, pops up down. We are in an, another area of consolidation. So if it breaks here, the next move now will be eighteen thousand, okay. The next move now will be eighteen thousand. So you see that this high, this high here, okay. If you look at it from the week, this high is higher than this. The high here is equally higher than this. Okay, and then the low here is higher than this low. This low here is higher than this low. Okay, so in as much as the previous low is higher than, or the recent low is higher than the previous one. Okay, we are in an uptrend. So to be in a downtrend, you are waiting for a break of structure where this market will come. Okay, and that structure will be here, somewhere around here, for this market to break this structure on the one hour time frame. So if I bring this horizontal to here, okay. If this market comes down this way, maybe from here it comes down this way, and then breaks this structure here. Okay, from here this is the pre the recent higher low. Okay, meaning that this low is higher than this one here. So if it breaks this low here, then we are now is is now going to be creating. Okay, um, as you can see here, it's going to be creating a lower high, lower high, and then lower low. So if it breaks this structure around here, okay, if it breaks it around this structure, which is the previous, um, you know, higher low, if it breaks it, then it will now start creating lower highs, okay? Uh, let me take this off here. So if it breaks, come down this way, breaks here, okay? Maybe it should come, break it to this point, come back a bit, okay? And then come again. So it will retrace a bit again, come again, retrace a bit, come again. So it will now start creating what we call, okay, sorry, lower highs here, okay, lower highs here, and then lower low. This, you will now know that this is, um, you know, a downtrend, okay? So what we are always looking for is this market has consolidated here. If we now break the structure here, which is the previous higher low here, okay, then we are now going to be looking for lower highs and then lower lows. That we know that we are in a downtrend. So in this case, we we'll have to only be looking for what a sell trade. But right now, if this market consolidates in this area and continue upward, okay, it means that this low here is now higher than this one. So the market will continue to go up and then continue to give you buying opportunity and stuff like that. So these are things you need to be looking at first when you come to the market. If you understand all of these things, then you can answer, okay, even if I go to the time frame, all right. Um, to the lower time frame. I'm equally looking for an opportunity where the market... Now, the reason why you need to look at the higher time frame 
and then come to the lower time frame to take your trade is because if you just depend on this lower time frame on the on the higher time frame you'll see that this move here okay that has moved that the move that has taken up the lower time frame gives an opportunity to enter the market early okay it gives an opportunity to enter the market early whenever you analyze the market and stuff like that why you look at the higher time frame normally if i'm scalping or day trading i'll just look at the one hour time frame okay look at this period okay where i'm actually going to analyze once i'm okay with this then i'll look for opportunity and say okay this market actually maybe i'm looking for an opportunity to short the market before i can short the market the market will need to break this structure here okay it will need to break this structure so it means that this market will need to come down here if it does not retest here and go up okay i'm waiting for it to break this low this previous low here when it breaks it i want it to start creating a lower a higher a lower high okay another high that will be lower than the previous one here okay or lower lows then you start looking for opportunity to sell in the market when it comes to trading you must not trade every day you only look for the opportunity once you see a, a chance to either long or short the market you will definitely be profitable in all of your trades okay so another thing you need to be looking at when it comes to trading is support and resistance level okay support and resistance level these are key points in trading every trader works with this whether um those who say they are smart money concept traders those who say they trade price actions and the rest okay whatever it is you need to be guided with support and resistance level okay so in trading when we talk about support and resistance in trading support and resistance are terms used to describe the level at which the price of an asset okay tends to stop and reverse okay a any level where a price of an asset tend to stop and reverse so if i go to the four hours time frame here okay now first we talk about support what where how do you get your support levels where do you get your resistance level so support refers to a level where the price of an asset tend to find support as it falls okay when the market is falling down we will and then we are looking for support we are looking at that level where when the market continues to fall and it fails to break that level that becomes a support level in the market okay so that level becomes a support level then resistance refer to a level where the price of an asset tends to find resistance as it rises okay whenever the price rises you know the way the market moves okay it comes this way go up okay it doesn't just go up and then come down again okay within this period where it will come down it will come down retrace up again come down retrace up again come down retrace up again so when we talk about support and resistance for support okay when the market rise um when the market falls and then fails to break a certain level we make sure we use that that we use that level as a support um, level okay and then when the market rises and it fails to break a certain level we use that as a resistance okay so when you look at the higher time frame here you want to look at a resistance level where the market has failed you know to break so if i come to um let's say the daily time frame here at this consolidation period there, there is a support a resistance level at the up top here okay and then there is a support level below here all right so when you mark this price this level where market fails to break you look at that level as a level of support and resistance you can equally do that on all time frame okay so if i zoom out of this time frame here there is we can actually say that there is a resistance at 17500 okay so you can bring your horizontal to here because if you look at this price history here you see okay if i retrace that back this to these levels here you see that at this level of 17500 or thereabout price has always touched this level from here you see that price you know moved up this way okay even with this false breakout and the rest then came down and stuff like that at 17500 there is a resistance here currently okay at 17500 because that is even where the price has gone to this current move upward movement here Okay, this price has gone to test that 17 as you can see the high here 
this 17500 and then you retrace it back so what we are waiting for is a break of this 17500 if the market breaks the 17500 which is the resistance here okay there is a strong resistance at 75 if it breaks it then the next level we are looking at is this 18000 okay either 18000 or 18500 or thereabout then if it breaks above 18500 okay another level we'll be looking at is around 20 21000 Okay, these are first things you need to look at. And then the support level are where the market has came down to. Okay, so we have another support somewhere. At each interval, you will be getting support and resistance. Okay, so you can get a support around here. All right. And then another support somewhere around 15,000. Okay, another support will be around this. So, though these are not major support because maybe when you talk about major support, if you look at the daily time frame, you can go to as low as 13. And, and below but this is where the price currently moved or where the price has tested okay you see here that the price moved down here it tested this level went up again this one came down though it didn't reach this level but it went up again and then came down okay touched this level and went up again it means that if price has tested this twice or three times it means that there is a support here okay there is what is actually stopping this market from breaking this support level when it breaks the support level then we can expect a lower price Okay, the same thing happens to the resistance level. So when the market breaks, okay, when it came down, it broke this level here, this middle level, and then went up this way. Okay, so now it came down, and currently we are at this support level of 17,500. So if it breaks this this resistance level, okay, resistance is at the top, okay, and then support is below. This is one thing you equally need to pay attention to. So if you want to be a, become a price action trader, what you are looking for is where the market will go. Okay, right now that the market is struggling with 17,500. If this market breaks this level here, what you'll be looking for, that is when you now, you know, start looking for break of structure. Okay, so as we just said that the trend of the market now is in an uptrend because this low, this low here is higher than this one. This low here is higher than this one. So this is the previous low before this consolidation we are having here. If this market breaks this structure and come down to this low here and then breaks this low, then we will now be looking for a sell trade. Okay, that sell trade could not start retracing until it gets to this support level of 16,500. Okay, so if the market gets to 16,500, there is every probability that it could break this support level and continue downward, or it will bounce from this support level and then continue upward. So the upward movement will come to test this 17,500 or even break the 17,500 and go up. Okay, so before you can even take a sell trade, is for it to break this previous low here or before you take a buy trade then it needs to break above 17500 okay so these are some of the things you need to understand when it comes to trading it is when you understand all of these things even if you are going to use indicator because there are hundreds of indicators in trading view and i've made it um, a point of duty to share at least every week share a strategy of a combination of indicators that you can use you can use one indicator, you can use two indicators. Now, for a free trading view account, the highest you can use is three indicators. So I try to share in the, you know, strategies around these indicators, and you can use indicators to determine the market movement, the market trend, and then you know some of these indicators even give you buys and sell signals within um, every interval as the market moves. Okay, so you can use indicator to learn. Now, for my own um, strategy as a beginner, first, why you learn these levels of resistance, levels of support, okay, um, you know, break of structures and all of this. You can actually start using indicators, all right? You use indicators to start trading. With the indicators, you can use it to make decisions that can profit in the market. And then as time goes on, you will now start looking at the bigger picture of price action and the rest, okay? You can just with price action, you can look at the market and trade without even using indicators. But as a beginner, you need indicators to start with. All right, because indicators gives you an idea. It you know it gives you a short term movement in the market where you can use to cash out before any other thing happen in the market. 